welcome back to the Peter H channel. This is number five, episode five update. Yeah, could have probably, well, I'm going to pack that with grease anyway. That's where the spring dowel fits in there. I'll pack, pack that with some grease. Whoops, let's go along to have a look at the other one. Now, actually, there was actually a number under here, which I seem to have painted over. It was already, it was hardly legible. So we've missed a bit of paint where the washer seats, and that's, that's going to make the washer seat a bit deeper anyway, so it's not really going to matter. Don't keep that nice and clean in there. No need to really adjust the the wire ties for these bolts. That's all right. I mean, the wire ties are only in there to stop them. They they're torqued up with the nut, so they're only there. The wire is just there to stop them falling in. It's not going to rust because it's covered in oil all the time. So there's no need to adjust those. I left the gasket on because I didn't want to paint the gasket face. I'll have to get a new gasket, obviously. Likewise, I didn't, didn't paint the gasket face here. Oh, well, I've missed a bit. Dear, oh dear. Today's parcel is a new right-hand side 109-2A3, along wheelbase being a 109, road spring. Okay, so here is the spring and the reference number does match what is in the parts catalog. Uh, the bushes came with these plugs, four off, and they come out quite easily. And screws working on a wheelie bin so I can don't have to transport the package in very far. So now the shackle pin, I've tested it, fits through the bush as it should. Now I've re-tapped, well I've not re-tapped, I've just cleaned the threads. These are half inch British standard fine in the shackle. Same, likewise, just clean the threads on the old bolts. That's a new shackle pin, these are the old ones. Uh, there's no real no reason to dispose of the old ones if they are if they're good. And you know, I like the old ones. The old ones have got the sort of tensile strength and the maker's name on the top of the top of the bolt and you know the replacements don't actually have anything you could say you want to make fresh start and use new bolts but you know it's a good bolt that anyway could have done a better paint job on the shackles I've used silver because I didn't want everything to look black oh, it's difficult to know where I got up to uh, but the rear cross member is on Got some conduit on there. Got new grommets. Get to the other one in a minute. So we're going along. Everything is okay. There's the new grommet. Some more conduit. Now that's a refurb spring. And this one here is a replacement spring. it was more cost effective than replacing the second leaf or is it the first leaf inside the second spring which curls over well anyway the bush had broken off in the last one so got a replacement spring it's all very good oh yeah now there are a couple of little places where the paint is thin on the other side it's a bit thin there it just it just catches in the light and you can see if you're lucky that you find thin bits of paint here for example it's just thin I saw some other bits there might be a thin bit so we're gonna have to get the paintbrush out again it's gonna be rather boring just for those tiny little bits So 
So I put the front front axle case. It's just resting on the studs on the dowel pin heads. Um, the replacement one doesn't really want to fit snugly. It's could be because I've painted the the, the uh, axle case, but I think it was snug down with the U-bolts. I don't remember all that spacage down there, but you know I'll have to have a look because that's gone on all right. Obviously, I haven't turned the tabs on the lock washers over, and that was a bit of a tight fit there. That's uh, lost some paint for me. Okay. That's just one of them little things that was very tight there. Don't I don't know why it was so tight there, but you know it, it went on really easy this side. Of course, this side's the original spring. This side is a replacement spring, so maybe that had something to do with it being so tight. You know, if you go under there, the bolts don't look so good that side as they do that side. So I can't explain that. <laughs> yeah. I did manage to keep them the same. You know, the same bolts were, were with these. So, you know, what's happened there? It's one of them inexplicable things. I know they were a bit hard to get off. But there it is. So it's smeared with grease both sides of the gasket, you know, joint in washer. Here's the, the darling. Let's find some. Well, let's work this out first. This one and this one will be regular bolts. This one will have the steering lock stop. This one will have a jacking point, and that one will be a regular bolt. So the steering lock tab is on the inside of the bearing housing. So it's not on the nut side, it's on the bolt side, it acts like a big washer. And that's in view of that. Now which way around this goes, I'm pretty sure it comes this way. So the jacking point has to go that way on, because if you try and put it this way on, it won't actually fit, so it has to go that way. So here fitted are the right hand pinion housings. And you be sure to check out my video on swapping, refitting a new swivel pinion housing bearing, not the half shaft bearing, but a swivel pin bearing. left side I've got it filled with newspaper both sides are filled with newspaper just to keep the dirt out so at this stage I did check that my axle breather was functioning the one that was on it and here is the filler so again I was looking at reasons for discrepancy that's why I used this this very corner was the only datum I could really trust because the only that doesn't seem to be it's the only part that doesn't seem to be completely bent up. Now I've obviously taken what was left of the mounting angle out of the tub, which meant drilling through these aluminium Land Rover spot welds. There was a corner bracket here, and the mounting angle goes under it, so that's fully removed as it was very damaged. So when I say damaged, oh, this is what was left of the mounting angle. It should be about 1.8 meters long and in one piece. And that's what I removed. It actually goes around the other way. It goes around that way. So that's what's making it rather difficult to get accurate readings. <laughs> but 
we should be okay. And I've just put a lick of paint on the front diff. So. That was working fine. Be, it's good to have it drained like that, it's going to be good to fill it with fresh oil anyway. So I've fitted the diff, it's empty at the moment. And um, by putting it through this hedge, I was able to put the half shaft in. So when I turn the diff, nothing happens. So, anyway, so I'm going to put the half shaft in nicely so it connects up. So now when I turn the diff, yes, the half shaft still doesn't do anything. So we need to make sure it's going to rotate and when it's at the right angle, there's 50 foul of clearance at least. Okay, so me joint washer or me gasket, as I always call them gaskets, but it's a joint washer sort of smeared with grease both sides. Now this is the top of the swivel pin housing and this keyway on the stub axle wants to be parallel with that or in line with it so this keyway wants to be at the top we want to which will mean these two bolts will be together like that so the keyway is at the top. So we've got split at the top and these sort of wigwam shapes are they're straight across the bottom and these two come down at least that's the picture I've been led to believe from the owner's manual or from the workshop manual actually it's not the owner's manual so it just remains for these to be tightened up not sure about the torque settings but I don't think there is a torque setting because they've got a lock washer and where there's a lock washer you sometimes have to back off slightly so that lock washer will fit in the right place. At least that's my experience of it. I mean, torque isn't so important when it's locked, but there it is. So here we are at the right hand side and we've got the keyway facing up. So in line with the swivel pin. Top swivel pin. To make sure the front hub assembly is nice and oily and clean. Now we know where the keyway is because we can see it in this shot. So we'll put the first washer on. Put the first washer in there and then put on a hub nut. Good idea to get my hub nut spanner really. <laughs> a hub nut socket, the Brit part one. So I'm gonna go and do that. So that's getting close to have a look how I'm measuring the end float. So I've got my dial test indicator, it's a mag mount, and it's set to zero at the moment. It's a really sensitive thing, it would be. I mean you see the tolerance of sort of four to six thou, which is 0 0.015 of a millimetre I think so as we turn the hub the the clock goes over the hub nut now the thing is my hub nut is not a very good hub nut it's also it's not a very good clock uh, it just hit a hole then so it's probably going to come back broken but I'm happy with that okay because it's it's hitting a pit on the hub nut itself where someone hit it with a with a punch. So the drive-in member 5 16 Whitworth bolts go up to 28 foot pounds which I will do when the tire is on and the wheel is on the ground. And I painted them red because I didn't want to paint them black.
I'm another new delivery today. Virtually next day again. And this is a rear left hand road spring for the 109. A rudimentary inspection, I like this because it's not clamps all the way through. This is actually this is a hex head with a steel sheath round the bolt. If I can turn it over, it's got nuts on the other end of, of this. So these screw bolts are more like the original ones. This is good, this is folded over, this is snapped off on the last one, this is why I got a new spring. As well as this top leaf. I could have replaced just, just the top leaf, but this one had snapped as well. So it's looking authentic with that bend there. Take it over to the other end. A little bit of a manky paint job, but there's nothing that a touch up isn't going to solve. I'm happy about that. It comes with the bushes and these little caps in the bushes, which I shall remove later on. So it's got the reference number, upside down reference number for me. It's the right way up if I turn the phone around. Anyway, with these nuts on here, it's looking pretty authentic. For reference, this is the most expensive item I've had to buy for the Land Rover rebuild so far, which was about double the price of a front spring, but it's quite a weighty beast. Cobwebs from storage, that's all right. Not complaining about this, it's very good. So what we'll do is just take, take these rubber bungs out and get on with it. So the first thing I've done is just gone over the various threads with the taps and the die stock just to make sure it's all going to bolt together smoothly. These are half inch British Standard Fine threads. And the first thing to do will be to fit the rear shackle in, in position. So that's going to need a shackle pin and a lock nut. So I've got the spring in position on the Land Rover. I'm just gonna, I've got it so the nuts will be pointing on the inside. That's those nuts here, in case you're wondering. So I'm just gonna put the shackle pin through there and attach the spring with that shackle pin through there. Okay, so that's just loosely put in there and I've put the nut on the end just so I don't lose it. It's very loose and it's just started to rain. But if I if we follow it up now, with the shackle up the other end, it should look something like that. And we're ready just to play with this and put the last shackle pin in. So that just lifts up there. And then the reason I'm using an adjustable is because you don't really want to set any torques at the moment. This is just going to be sort of loosely fitted until the machine's actually running. This is for now, it's just literally to stop it falling off, but it's got, a, it's got to seat itself in, really. It's so coming through, and we can just take it in, put it in far enough to put the lock nuts on, just, but we won't be setting any torque or putting any permanent settings in just yet. winding that in there. So these are the original shackles but not the original spring. Pop that on there. And pop that one up there. Oh dear, oh dear. Up a bit of dirt there. Right. 
Yeah, and then I'll just tighten up the front one enough to put the lock nut on properly, uh, but it won't be torqued up until it's running. So just got a little break in the rain, and these are my brake, rear brake pipe anchor plates. I'll put one on both sides there. Ideally, I'd jack this up a bit higher because I can put the axle. I've got to put the axle case on there now because someone could walk off with these. It's got to be bolted on. But uh, I haven't got a lot of clearance down here at the moment, so I really want to jack it up a bit higher. So I just sat the axle case there. It's just on the dowel pins in the little recesses of the axle case. Not very high off the ground, and I had to put the the drain plug in before really because it would just be too awkward to get it in putting it in later it's nearly ready to go on now just gonna tidy up that crown wheel a bit it seems to have picked up some grip from somewhere probably in the water and the cardboard and the snails and things well that's what happens if you don't strip it down you know and you keep it outside in the summer not to worry. Well, I put the breather in, which we think is working. It's, it needs a little bit of rust converter on there. And here's the diff, obviously, with the repaired split pin or replaced split pin. And all of the spring washers accounted for now, which I've got replacements for. Notice it's jacked up a bit higher now. Jacked up higher so that we can fit the brake anchors on and not have the wheels on necessarily. Uh, there, I've got to remember to put some oil in it. It's not got oil in it at the moment. doesn't actually look like there's a gasket on there but there is make sure the holes are lined up it's a gasket like this one it's been treated with grease smeared with grease both sides so the holes all line up and then that's ready to go on the machine it doesn't the gasket is actually on there okay so I've treated that to a uh, to a clean just got rid of all the pieces of grit and things and We've got to make sure the keyway is facing up. So let's line up the bolt holes first. That's going to go on like, like that. Let's go. So my hub assembly sleeve is just resting on there. And now we're going to get the brake anchor plate and bolt that, bolt that all in as one. All right, so I've just fitted the first half of the hub assembly in. I've noticed I've missed a bit with the paint here right? because I thought this was actually a surface that touched another surface I'm just gonna, I don't watch I don't lose a bearing turning it around like that anyway so the sleeve has the recess pointing up now if you're like me you're a bit concerned that the mar uh, the wheel cylinder see the pipes the fixed pipe comes along this holder into the wheel cylinder and I sort of suspect that the, the wheel cylinder should be down here so I might actually have to re reposition the anchor plate at one point and if I've got to do it on this one I'll probably have to do it on the front ones as well let's have a look so you know they're here there's the hole for the wheel cylinder now I was using this as my bearing here and it's sort of in line so maybe I'll be lucky there you know, for the sharp-eyed among you, there's no lock washers here. Now this is how it came off the machine to me. And I went to the, in the workshop manual, this is shown with lock washers, no question about it. It's shown with lock washers, you've got one here, one down and one across the bottom. My parts catalog doesn't even have the fixings the bolts aren't even in the, the nuts and the bolts aren't even in the parts catalog and lock washers aren't there either 
so I'm really stuck with that. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it without lock washers, uh, lock, you know, lock tab washers. Maybe later on, I'll just, you know, they're only about £3.49 for 10 sort of pattern parts. And if I have got to relocate the anchor plate, it's going to be easier without the lock washers. But, you know, for a later date, it's one of those Land Rover things for a later date that never gets done. But, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if they were left off because I've had... You know, let's have a look at that diff. The diff had spring washers missing, so, you know, someone might have had this off and just left the lock washers off as well. But they're not in the parts catalogue, but neither are the bolts and the nuts or the spring washers. So we're really at a loss there, you know, a bit stuck. We could put lock washers on. It's certainly not going to hurt, is it? Anyway, that's for another time. So remember, use a dial test indicator. This is a mag mount. And uh, if it reads something like that, you know you've got a situation. <laughs> well, what it is, it keeps falling off the edge of the nut, so I haven't put the clock on in the right place. And that's why that looks a bit, a bit weird. Anyway, so four to six thou, because I'm seven inch, 0 0.1, 0 0.015 of a mil, I think. Yeah, something like that. So when you're happy with your run out, you can, it's time to close the lock tab washer. I use a pair of plumber's grips and hopefully you can just get them onto here, whoops, without messing everything up. These ones are a little bit on the temperamental side that they, they lock up. Okay, well that, that took a two-handed squeeze with the plumber's grips there. That's all got half of it down. So I put the half shaft in to the diff. It's connected up. Here's the fabric washer, the felt washer. That's already on there. And this is a treated driving member gasket and I've made sure all the holes line up. And that's got smear of grease on both sides so now I'm just going to put the driving member on there just to keep the half shaft safe all right so obviously it's looking like a bit of a mess half put on parts bits of plastic floating around all over the place you know a half put on part for instance this rear shock there's a whole bush missing from underneath, a bush and a washer missing from underneath. And look, the cable, the cable tie is still in the plastic bag. No, check straps, still in the plastic bag. So we've cleaned the three apes UNF holes. And what we're waiting for is some ratchet straps, just so we can close this gap and put the check strap on. I mean, the fact that I've put the anchor plate and the hub assembly on, it don't really matter, to be honest, because it's not that fiddly, especially with the tub. If the tub wasn't, if the tub wasn't, if the tub wasn't off, it would be rather tricky, perhaps with clearance and stuff. Oh, but there's loads of room to swing around here. So we're just waiting for some ratchet straps. We're going to get in there, close those gaps up. Same on the other side. I've put the check straps on the inside because they'd be most awkward. Let's go around and have a look. I'm gonna put some connectors on these. So I'm waiting for a less windy day and I'll be able to just solder some bullet connectors. I've got to use standard ones because I couldn't find any Land Rover ones, which is a bit, a bit awkward. So like I say, we've got to use some ratchet straps to close up these leaf springs and then that will go on again. What we have here. Ah. Oh no, that is as far up as it's supposed to. <laughs> okay, so what we got here is, is the, the other one of these is on the other side, but there is a bush and one of these missing. Okay. So, uh, you know, just twiddle our thumbs while we wait for the ratchet straps. But what I'll probably do is put this, put this assembly on here as well. So I'm looking at the rear suspension. 
shock absorber. Now I've got a, a new lock nut, and this is the original bush guide, or is it the retaining washer? Oh, that's the guide, and this is the retaining washer. That's the retaining washer, this is the guide. It's one of the two. Anyway, so there's a bush guide or retaining washer. Here's the bush, there's a bush guide or retaining washer. That goes back to back. So the rear fixing that I've got has, has the hole in, the hole goes there. Now the trouble is, I've put the lock nut on now, and I haven't activated the nylock, but I, that's to crush the bushes in a bit, because look what happens when I take it off. Well, there's very little room. There's very little room to get the nylock on. So this isn't, and this isn't even on the machine yet. There's quite a lot of spring in these bushes. Crushability. And it's going to be awkward to fit this. And my tip is to actually fit these before you put the anchor plate on. Because you get less and less room. Okay, so we've fully fitted the check straps. Now, I did it by using ratchet straps to shut down the gap. And it shut it down quite a lot. It's a good six inches. And on this side, I used some packing, which actually caused the ratchet to start to go in at an angle, which isn't very good because it's actually split the fabric. And on this one, the ratchet gave up and uh, broke it. But it's held it tight enough to get the check strap on both sides so I wouldn't have done it without those now I've caused the spring to shut uh, the shock absorber to shut but I should be able to just pull that down because we want to open that up the gap there should be open so that it points all the way in and then we can get that nut on and there'll be fully fitted rear suspension on this side So, oh, 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 he's left the plastic on here. Well, at least my check straps ain't got greasy fingers. No greasy fingers on my check straps. And then these are the these are the new. Oh, I think they were three apes. Well, whatever they're new. We put some. Oh, well, those ones. They're not so new. Let's have a look at these old ones. I use these old ones. So, some original bolts, I mean, you know, they're just about usable. Bit of check strap on the other side. The shock absorber bushes. So that all went in as a bit of a faff, but you've got to put the check straps on first, and then your shock absorbers can go on quite easily. Mention the brake plates. Hopefully they're at the correct rotation. Gonna have to touch up. This, I put, took this off on and off a couple of times as I wasn't sure but they're spigoted so these ones are harder to put on that's what it was and I have to I'm gonna get some contacts to do with little connectors bullet connectors and that they'll look good well they won't look that good because they won't be genuine Land Rover ones yeah once again gotta go over these Lost a bit of paint there. I might actually could touch that one up. That's not too hard to touch up. Really good. Again, putting the new bushes down there. So you have a sort of a top pan bush, the bush, then a little one. I mean, I was quite dubious whether that whole sandwich was going to work. But that's what it says to do in the book. These are all genuine part numbers. like to touch this up and I need to get a small paintbrush to do that I haven't really touched the front for ages now again though probably want to put some connectors like these bullet connectors probably put those on the front yeah so it's looking a bit weathered down there now but that's nothing I think oh, this is a bit low it's looking a bit low down on the ground this yeah, so I wish I'd got those uh, tie-downs earlier. But there you go, you can't have everything, can you?